other books is a large part of it because I was a student reader and a reader generally. Um, that's like the bedrock of it. I don't think that's true for all writers. Other writers would say experience, you know, or travel or family law, but for me it's other books. And then inserted into that is definitely personal experience, but I'm very slow at um, transforming personal experience into writing. You know, if I, I spent two years living in Italy and I've barely wrote a word about Italy, maybe in another 10 years, everything is very delayed with me, but it's the books that are much more immediate. If I read a book that I love, I always take something from it like a little magpie. <laughs> when you have children, you don't, it's just whenever there's a nanny. <laughs> That's the truth. If someone will look after my children for four hours, then I will do some work. I don't have the luxury anymore of feeling like it's the right moment or having the inspiration. You know, when the nanny comes, I go to the library and that's my four or five hours and I have to be very focused in that. So I, I, it's a different, it's just a different world from before where I think I would have said something like, I can't write till the afternoon or I like to be in a certain room. That's all a previous life. <laughs> well, I, I'm also a critic, so I have kind of technical theories about this, and I do think that writers and actors, to some degree, are born, or at least it's a kind of psychological condition of one kind or another. I, don't, I think it's also true that people can come to writing from different places, and often those are the most interesting writers. But born writers, I think you can spot. It doesn't mean they're particularly good. There's lots of really bad born writers. But it's a certain state of mind. And I would say I had that state of mind pretty early on in life. The, main, the serious part of it is having a great capacity to be alone. That really is the key. Like I, I have lots of students and friends who want to write and who, who are very talented. But when it really boils down to it, the question is whether you want to spend all day alone. <laughs> and most people don't want to spend all day alone. Understandably, they want to have colleagues, they want to have relationships and things happening to them every day and news they can bring back to their spouse of what went on today. That doesn't happen in a writing life. There's no news. Nothing happens. <laughs> you went to the library and you worked. So I was aware of that capacity in myself very early on, that I, I like to be alone. In some ways, I preferred to be alone and I was good at being alone. None of those things. I'm reading Flannery O'Connor's letters now and I recognise what she describes, which is really not knowing what you're doing until you're doing it. And I think it's because it's a matter of tone and of sentences. She would start with a certain atmosphere, a feeling she wanted to get from these stories, and she'd just start writing. And all the inquiries from her publishers about, well, what's it going to be about? And when's it going to be finished? And how long is it going to be? She couldn't answer any of those questions. Um, and I think that's quite common to a certain kind of writing. It's the same way I work. I could never tell you at the beginning of a novel what is going to happen. And I would find it very hard to explain what I was doing. I just have a sense of a certain colour or a feeling that I want to evoke. And that, that's about it in the beginning. People often say miscellaneous. I'm sure you've, if you've asked this before. Everyone feels a little bit miscellaneous. Um, yeah, somewhere between non-fiction and fiction. That's how I write as well, I like that idea. That you can take real things and embed them in fiction and the other way around. I'm not very fierce about genre definitions. To me, it's just writing. I would just be writing. <laughs> oh my God, I've never really thought about it. I, I think for writers, the questions they like to ask are the questions they ask each other and they're quite technical. I think readers would be surprised two writers sit down for lunch. The conversation is very, it's like two bricklayers. Like how many words today and, and how far are you in the middle or are you going downhill? Which means, you know, in the second half of the novel where things become a little easier and you start to move. That's the reality of novel writing. It's quite practical. And the more kind of airy fairy questions which writers are often asked, I think writers feel they have to make up answers for it because that's not really the way we think when we're working. Well, I'm, I'm writing a novel that will be finished in December and a book of essays that are almost finished too. So I think it'll be two books quite close together. It's just a strange circumstance because for once I'm not pregnant or, you know, I just have some time. So I've managed to write two books. Um, 
and a movie. I, I adapted the Embassy of Cambodia, a story of mine with my husband, and we're hoping that that will go into production next year. Yeah.